Hey there, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to cover how to use the custom DAF Racing uh, VBF files to flash your GNK Twinster RDU with Forescan beta. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is follow my blog post regarding all the downloads you'll need. You'll need Workstation, uh, I'm sorry, VMware Workstation uh, player. You'll need uh, the beta version of Forescan. Uh, the current, uh, as of making this video, is 242. Uh, you'll need the extended license for Forescan. Uh, you'll need an OD ODB Link EX adapter uh, driver and firmware for that. Uh, all this is listed in my blog post, which I'll uh, drop in the uh, video description below. So go ahead down there and, and take a read um, uh, to get the uh, prereqs for this uh, uh, tutorial. So uh, first thing we need to do is extract the DAFWorks uh, archive that's linked in the tutorial. Uh, this is highly compressed, so uh, it's going to expand to approximately 12 gig. So you need about... 15 to 18 gig to uh, free storage uh, in order to do this because you need to extract it first and then obviously you can delete um, the zip file, the seven zip file. So uh, I extracted into a folder called DAF Racing. Um, the folder for the VM is inside that. Uh, the VM we're after is, uh, uh, the VM file we're after is the uh, VM uh, virtual machine configuration file or uh, the file extension, if you have extensions turned on in your Windows install, is uh, VMX. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and start uh, Workstation Player. Now I have Workstation Pro installed. Uh, player will work fine, so don't be worried. Um, so go to File Open and browse to your DAF Racing VM folder. Uh, highlight the uh, VMX file and click open. So you can ignore my other VMs here. All right, and so once you get to this point, go ahead and click power on this virtual machine. And if you get a message about uh, I uh, asking if you uh, moved your copy of the VM, I always uh, uh, click I moved it. So the Linux VM will start up now. Just give that a, a, a few minutes. Depending upon your uh, machine, if you've got a, a, a newer machine, um, virtual machines should run uh, a lot faster on it. If you have a little bit older machine, uh, it should still work. Uh, there may be some BIOS settings you might uh, need to enable on your particular uh, hardware if uh, the VM won't start up. I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial, but certainly leave me a comment, and uh, if I can help out, I will. So once uh, the operating system boots up, uh, this is a Ubuntu VM. You'll see a few uh, icons here, uh, DAF RDU, DAF ABS, log all drive temperature, uh, log folder. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the uh, taskbar. Uh, the one we're after is terminal. So go ahead and click on that. You'll get a terminal window. We need to change directories. So the first thing you'll want to do is type ls and you'll see all the uh, folders under your user directory. Uh, what you want to uh, change directory into is the DAF works folder. So type CD and DAF works. You also need to remember uh, on Linux platform, uh, case is important. So in this case, uh, the, the D is capitalized and so is the W, make sure you uh, do that. You can also press tab uh, as you start to type the the word out and it should auto complete the uh, the folder. So now we're in DAF works. If we do an LS again to list the contents, you'll see uh, various uh, Python scripts as well as um, folders. Uh, folders are in blue uh, and the uh, scripts are in um, bold green and the uh, license and readme file um, are a, a darker green color. But the folder we want next is the VBF folder. So do a CD VBF, 
and then go ahead and type ls once more. Now my folder, uh, or rather uh, you'll see all the uh, various um, uh, firmware files. Uh, we'll get into those in just a minute, but uh, what you need to do at this point to create the firmware uh, that we need to take and use with Forescan is a uh, period forward slash build dot sh. And once you have that typed in, press enter. Uh, it'll quickly go back to the command prompt. If you type ls again, uh, you'll see um, uh, all the output is there. Uh, and what this does is this builds the um, VBF files uh, that you'll need, which contain the uh, reverse engineered um, firmware that's going to give you the different uh, uh, torque application um, that the RDU is going to do. So at this point, uh, you've got those files. Um, now, if you've got a focus RS, you'll notice that um, there's significant amount of, of various uh, files there for that. If you've got a um, MKZ, in my case, uh, those files aren't there. And that's because the version of VM that I have downloaded here is actually not up to date. So uh, I'm gonna quickly up, uh, update that. So let's go back a folder and we'll type in um, git pull, G-I-T space P-U-L-L. -L. I'll put this in the, the uh, notation as well in the uh, blog post. So uh, for whatever reason, my network is not working correctly on this guy. I'm gonna pause the video and fix that. Uh, I'll also cover this in the uh, tutorial at some point. All right, we're back. In my case, I have a different network configuration that uh, requires um, a little bit of a different uh, uh, adapter setting uh, for my VM. Uh, this should not be the case for you uh, folks that are just installing player um, from scratch. So uh, what we're doing is we're pulling uh, all the new latest files from the uh, repository that uh, DAFWorks uses, which is GitHub. So our, our Git pull request just pulls down any changes um, that were made. And you can see the list of changes here. So the first thing we need to do is run that uh, period forward slash build dot sh again. Oh, I'm sorry. And we need to change into the uh, VBF folder first. I'll go ahead and run that build dot sh again. And you'll see it's uh, it's actually uh, going out and pulling down um, the archives it needs. So now, if you do an ls, you'll see there is some additional files in here, uh, starting with HP. Those files are specific to Lincoln MKZ, which is what I have, uh, as well as it should be also applicable to uh, Continental uh, vehicles with the uh, twin uh, RDU. So uh, in, any, in any case, uh, at this point, we now have all the files we need generated. So we need to go back to the VM settings. So right click on the VM name here at the top, go to settings. And we wanna go under options. And we wanna go down to shared folders and click enable until next power off or suspend. And we'll click add at this point. So uh, in Workstation Pro, it creates a wizard here. Click next. Um, host path is the path of our Windows 10 machine we're running the VM on. So go ahead and click browse. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to put them in uh, the root of, uh, we'll put them in the uh, DAF racing folder. We actually can make a new folder, and that might be advisable so that you can keep track of your firmware file. So type in uh, firmware, hit enter, uh, and then select that folder, click OK. Now on the Linux VM, you'll see it's going to have a folder called uh, firmware as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy these uh, VBF files from the, the Linux VM over to our desktop. Now, uh, we could host these somewhere else. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Um, but for now, this is the easiest way uh, I can illustrate for you to generate the, the files and um, uh, maintain them. We are modifying Ford's firmware. Uh, I'm not sure how, how uh, that works. Uh, hosting that, and that's why we're doing it this way. So go ahead and click Next. Uh, we're going to enable this share. We don't want read-only checked. That will prohibit us from 
uh, copying files to it. Click finish and then click OK. Okay, and so at this point, uh, we'll need to map that folder into uh, the Linux uh, Ubuntu VM. Okay, so in order for us to enable uh, access to the folder, we need to run a simple command on the Ubuntu virtual machine. So uh, I'll go ahead and copy this into the blog post um, where you can find it and run it. But basically what we need to do is open a terminal window again or use the same one you had open. I just rebooted my machine. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to clear what's in a terminal window, just type the word clear and it will remove anything in there. For example, there if I do an LS, you can see all the folders. If I type clear, it clears it out. Okay, so what we need to do is type uh, backslash USR bin vm hgfs hyphen fuse space period host colon forward slash forward slash mnt forward slash hgfs space hyphen o space subtype equal vm hgfs hyphen fuse and press enter and at that point you should go back to a command prompt if we type cd space forward slash mnt forward slash hgfs and hit enter and then type ls we should see the firmware folder and that's the folder we shared through uh, the vmware uh, workstation player client okay so we're going to go ahead and open up the files folder i'm going to drag it over here so i can still see my taskbar. If we go to uh, DAFWorks VBF, we can select all the files in here. You can unselect the build SH if you just hold down the control key and let you unselect one file. Right click copy and we're going to click on other locations, computer, MNT, HDFS, and firmware. And then go ahead and right click and paste. Now you can see the files are here already. I actually already did this once. Uh, in my case, I'll replace. But what we're doing is copying these files over to the Windows folder that we set up previously. So if I browse back to that and go to firmware, we now see all of the VBF files uh, on our Windows desktop. At this point in time, you can go back to your Ubuntu VM, the DAF Racing VM, and go to uh, the power icon in the top right corner click power off and shut off and power off again the VM will shut down automatically and at this point we're going to move on to the Forescan part of the tutorial hey guys Ryan here I uh, just wanted to add a little bit to my tutorial video uh, some some items that I didn't really mention that are probably worth mentioning to everybody so I am using a Windows 10 laptop you can see the laptop right here uh, I did the earlier video uh, tutorial on my uh, desktop just because I had Workstation Pro installed already and kind of accessed everything down there. So um, that portion shows that. Uh, if you're in the scenario where you can do that, you want to run the VM on a desktop, you'll just need to copy the uh, VBF files once they're on your desktop to a USB key. Or if you're fortunate enough to have some sort of network storage, you can do that as well. Um, copy it from your desktop to your laptop through network. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what your IT level is advanced or or not but in any case um that's how i got the files to my uh laptop here out in the garage so uh, a couple more things um highly recommend you plug you can see here the car highly recommend you plug the car into a, a charger before you do this um i've got the laptop here sitting on top the odb link cable is plugged in the car is actually on right now and ready to, to open four scan i just didn't do that yet i want to uh add this um, precursor to the video. So if you're using the Forescan Dev recommended ODB Link EX USB cable, there is a firmware 5.5.3 uh, .5 that uh, improves the flashing ability from Forescan. I highly recommend flashing that prior to 
uh, flashing the RDU with four scan. Uh, depending on the version of four scan you're using, uh, right now I'm on 242 beta. Uh, there is a uh, built in function to flash that firmware to the adapter for you. If that doesn't work or you don't get a message when you first plug it in, um, and I'll show you in the uh, screen cap, I would recommend just downloading the um, firmware update utility from uh, uh, ODB Link's website, which I'll put a link to that in the video description and my tutorial. So uh, we're assuming that you've done that, um, that your laptop's connected and plugged in and ready to rock and roll. And that's where I'm gonna start the tutorial at. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the video or comment on my blog post. And hey there, Ryan here again. So we're on the Windows 10 laptop now, and we have the VBF files on the desktop that we created with a virtual machine. Uh, I have the laptop connected with the ODB Link EX adapter in the car as well. So go ahead and launch Forescan. The car ignition is on during this part, and I already have a profile created in Forescan. If you need to do this, um, it will prompt you. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. In this case, I click yes. It's going to scan all the modules on the CAN bus, and you'll see those listed here below. Now, your vehicle may have different modules, but that's okay. All right, so now we've seen all the modules here. We're going to click on the chip, which is configuration and programming. And what we're interested in here is the AWD. Uh, module firmware update and click the play button which will begin the service procedure and there's a generic message here regarding using a wire adapter versus a wireless uh, make sure the adapter is uh, designed for flashing firmware in the case of ODB link EX that's exactly what it was uh, intended to do and then obviously have a uh, battery charger attached press OK I'm going to turn the ignition off now, so go ahead and do that and then press OK. So on the left-hand side, we'll show you the current firmware level that you're at uh, for your vehicle. And on the right-hand side, we'll show you the very latest that's available from Ford. But go ahead and click Download so that all the necessary files download from Ford. Uh, and at this point, we're going to change uh, available to custom. And then we'll see strategy and calibration are empty. We need to select the files that we created earlier. So click on the three dots under strategy. You'll see load from files, click browse. Pick the uh, VBF file. In this case, uh, for MKZ, it is uh, daf-t1.vvvs. We're going to click that. If you have a Focus RS, you're trying to do this too. There's a handy list. Uh, username Hank uh, produced a great spreadsheet. Uh, I will link that in the blog post. Uh, the DAF Racing GitHub also has that information. But I'll be sure to include that in my blog post. Click OK at that point. Click OK again. And then we need to pick the calibration. So back to browse, select your calibration. You don't need to use the stop activity on buses, but if you want the flash to go potentially faster, you can do that. Uh, and I would leave the force program unchanged firmware checked because I've already, in my case, I've already flashed this firmware, but uh, in order to do it again, I had to leave that checked. So go ahead and click on program. So now you need to turn the ignition on, but don't start the car. Press OK. So in this case, it complained my battery voltage is too low, so I'll be right back. So I've fixed the charger. I'm back. And at this point, it's going to tell you uh, how long the process should take and what it's going to do. And then it gives you a reminder again that your laptop shouldn't be sleeping, that you have a battery charger on there. 
and don't try to stop the application during the process or you might break the module. So click OK and you'll see that it is flashing the module. This takes approximately a minute. Okay, you should see firmware loaded successfully both times and then service procedure completed successfully. At this point, we're done flashing. You can stop the service procedure, close Forescan, and shut off your vehicle and disconnect your battery charger. And you're ready to enjoy your reverse engineered RDU firmware. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.